Welcome back everyone. The question on everybody's mind, do we need IPv6? But of course, this is part of the evolution of the IP protocol. We have no choice but to move on to IPv6. Not only for the mere fact that we have exhausted all IPv4 public addresses, I believe it was last year that Cisco held a webinar saying that this is it. No more IPv6 public addresses will be assigned. Uh, it is what we call the, or I call, the resistance to change syndrome. And I believe in my book I wrote something about that that happened between NT4 and NT5 where people would refuse. NT4 was the greatest thing since sliced bread that Windows 2000 was ah, just an invention. Same thing here, but you can't really blame them. You can't really blame them. If you take a look at IPv6, it's now, it's kind of painful and hard to look at, you know, and this is only part of the address, that's the network portion of it. It's much longer, right? It's 128 bits versus 32 bits. We now have weird names for numbers like undecillion, 340 undecillion, right? Uh, total number of addresses. One network address can hold more than 15 quintillion. There's an exact number in the book, 18 quintillion something. I'm not going to remember that. That is just way too much information for the brain, but that's a lot of numbers. So that's one of the main reasons that we went to IPv6, hexadecimal format, all that good stuff. But yes, we do need IPv6 and all the brand new features that it brings with uh, auto configuration, and we'll speak upon that later. That it has the header is, even though it's a bigger address, it is now smaller. It took out all those options that made it more streamlined, aligned to 64 bit processing. So it's a lot faster than IPv4 ever was. Now, IPv6 is definitely uh, the way that we need to go. So we need to embrace. Uh, IPv6, not just for the mere uh, for the sake of size, where we have more IP addresses, as you know, and I've said it before in this course, we have more than one device on us that has an IP address. The world population exceeds 7 billion people. Uh, IPv4 only holds 4.2 billion, some say 0.3. Still not enough to cover 7 billion people. Uh, therefore, definitely, IPv6 is something that is needed. You know, you have IPsec built in, end-to-end -end security, uh, no need for NAT, or soon, no need for NAT. But again, it's going to take time. It's going to take time before the change to IPv6 happens because of the backbone routers. They're the ones that are being done first. And eventually, it will trickle down to all the networks that we work in. Uh, slowly but surely, that transition uh, will be made. And speaking of transition, which we'll speak upon later as well, uh, there are transition mechanisms that IPv6 brings to help us move forward. So IPv6 has been a gift, really, from uh, these engineers that created IPv6 because we needed it. They saw that, hey, we were very wasteful with IPv4. We did not know that IPv4 or that the internet was going to explode as it did, grow as quick as it did, but as with evolution, all right, we all must adapt to change, all right? There's a saying that says, adapt and overcome, and that's one of the things that we need to do. We need to adapt and overcome to IPv6 because already there are a lot of countries that did not get the big pool of IPv4 addresses and they have been working with IPv6 longer than we have already because they had no choice. So we've been kind of lackadaisical in changing to IPv6 but now we've reached that point where we have exhausted it and definitely IPv6 is the way to go. The configurations, the new routing protocols with RIPNG, OSPF version 3, EIGRP for IPv6, I mean, a lot easier to configure. They've made things easier. It's just the resistance to change syndrome. We just don't want to look 
at an IP address that looks like that, right? When we when I do my labs, I put them in statically. We see that it's like, oh my God, hexadecimal numbers. I don't know. You know, it's we're not used to seeing that. So that's all it is. But once you start working with uh, IPv6 and it becomes a daily part of your routine in the IT world, it'll be something that you will embrace and you will get used to just like we have with everything else. Some people still have difficulties with IPv4 until they take one of my courses or read my book and then they say, oh my God, that was so simple. Why wasn't I told that before? So the same thing with IPv6 as you will see. So definitely, yes, we do need IPv6. We must embrace IPv6 and start using it as soon as possible. We'll continue talking about IPv6 and it's all its features and, uh, and configurations and lessons to come. I'll see you then.